commercial free Catholic charismatic channel. He's strengthening the faith of so many people. To promote the gift of church teaching, dedicated for the new evangelization. God's blessings on your work, may God bless and prosper you. Shalom World, God's own channel. Let me tell you, to me, the most amazing story of evangelization that I've ever heard of. And it happened only a couple years ago uh, in Rome. Uh, we, we, at the time, our, the ECRIS office, the International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services, our office was on the other side of the Tiber River from the Vatican. And we had an appointment that afternoon at the Vatican. So we left the office, walked across the river, and went to see the Pope, and then we were walking back. As we were crossing the bridge back over the Tiber, very loud, lots of traffic, and one of the secretaries said to me, I want to tell you an amazing story about this bridge when we get back to the office. Just, just look at this spot right here. I'll tell you the story later. So, I'm, you know, there's a bridge and traffic going by, and down below is the Tiber River. It's like, okay, get back to the office. I said, okay, what happened? Now, this, this is what she told me. This is amazing. And I want to stress, this did not happen in Jerusalem in 32 AD. This happened in modern-day Rome a couple of years ago. And I stood on the place it happened, and the people who this happened to are still alive and living in Rome right now. Here's what happened. There was a young girl who... Uh, who uh, was a very poor family living in Italy out in the countryside. Uh, very poor, very unsophisticated. And this girl had a dream that someday she was going to get a very uh, flashy job working in Rome. And she was going to make a lot of money and she'd be able to help her parents and her brothers and sisters who live back on the farm. So this girl used to write letters to anybody in Rome. You know, can you find me a job? Uh, I would like to do this. And, and people say, come on. She would just keep sending letters and sending letters and sending letters. One day, she gets a letter back. And it says, um, we do have some opening positions in such and such a, a business. And, uh, you know, you, you might be just what we need. Why don't you come and, and you know, we'll, get, we'll give you a try. Well, this girl was just ecstatic. And she told her parents, you know, I need a new dress because I'm going to Rome and my career is going to start. And the parents thought, well, okay. So they got her some new clothes and everybody went down to the train station and waved at her. And I'll send you back money. I'll write you soon. And you'll, you know, you'll be proud of me. You'll be proud of me. You'll be proud of me because I want to be significant. I want to be significant. The girl goes. Somebody meets her at the train station. Uh, yeah, uh, we're just going to need a few more days to get that job settled, but we have an apartment you can stay at right now. Okay, so she stayed there, and a few days turned into a couple weeks. And then they said, well, that job didn't work out, but we have another job that's going to open in about two weeks. Will you stay with us a few, little longer? Basically, what happened was the poor girl got kind of tricked into a, a sex trade deal. She got hooked on drugs, and to help with her addiction, she became a prostitute. 
modern day Rome, modern day Rome. This particular neighborhood, pretty tough area. And, and this girl who was raised a good Catholic girl was so ashamed and, and knew that she had broken faith with everything her family taught her, uh, she, she didn't know what to do. She, she could not go home. She could not continue to live life she was living. Her parents would send her letters and she just went right back. Or, you know, everything's fine, I'll get back to you soon, making lots of money, Rome is wonderful, and would, you know, send the letter off. Ironically, her, her name, her real name is, is Magdala. So she'd write, you know, you know, love Magdala and send the letters off. So, Magdala is trapped. She perceives that she can't go home. Her life is a living hell. And so, one night, in absolute desperation, about 4 o'clock in the morning, Magdala leaves this guy she's been with all night, and she walks out on the bridge on the Tiber. And she throws one leg up over the rail. Now, what I'm about to tell you is the exact story that she told to the secretary. One leg up over the rail. She's getting ready to bring the other leg up, and she feels a hand on her shoulder. She feels a hand on her shoulder. She turns, and she says, Jesus Christ was standing there with tears running down his face. And she audibly heard him say, Magdalena, why are you doing this to me? Don't you know how much I love you? And he just stood there and he cried. He wasn't glowing. He wasn't, you know, lightning and thunder. He was weeping. And Magdalena said she was so unnerved, fortunately, she, she, she fell back onto the street. She didn't go over. She fell on the street. And, and she says she was laying there on the pavement, weeping. And he was just standing there, and she literally had him by the feet. And she's sobbing and sobbing and crying. And she says, he, he never said another word. But every time the last guy flashed up in her mind, she felt this wave of love. And every time she remembered the last injection, she felt this wave of love. And she says, I, I knew, I knew that not only was I being forgiven, but I was being cleansed. She's got Jesus by the feet in modern day Rome on a modern bridge. And she is crying her soul out. And every time an image, every time a memory, every time a thought, every time an accusation, every kind of common, a condemnation came on her, this wave of love came through her and it was gone. It lost its power over her. And she says she thinks she was maybe laying there for about 40 minutes. It could have been an hour. But when she... <clears throat> came to, came to herself, came out of it, whatever you want to say, there, there was nobody physically there anymore. She was there by herself, laying, passed out on the sidewalk. But the sense of love remained with her. And at 5 o'clock in the morning, Magdalena pulled herself up off the sidewalk, went back to her apartment, knocked on the doors, and told all her Sister prostitutes, who she met on the bridge, what he said, and how she felt. Ladies and gentlemen, in that particular neighborhood in Rome, prostitution and drug use has virtually stopped. Magdalena has never gone back to the country. She still lives there. She still lives among the prostitutes and the drug dealers. And all she does is tell anybody who will listen about the man on the bridge. Now, Magdalena was raised as a good Catholic girl. She knew all this, but it wasn't until the bridge 
that she experienced all of this. And, and I think I'm safe to say I don't believe Magdalena will ever go back to drugs or prostitution because now she knows her value. Now she knows who she is. Now she knows what she's worth. She knows that her name has been carved on the palms of God's hands. And I suppose, like the rest of us, every now and then Magdalena has a bad day. I suppose, like the rest of us, every once in a while Magdalena says, oh, Lord, where are you? I suppose, like the rest of us, Magdalena at times gets down. But her core, her fundamental foundation is, I am valued, I am treasured, even if all the others should forget, he will never forget me. You know, I really believe, I, I told you about my cousin Bill, I really believe this sincerely. I believe that as long as you have one person in your corner, you can endure anything. You can survive anything. You can triumph over anything. The whole world may be against you, but if you have even one on your side, that's enough. Now, it's interesting, of the 7.1 of us who live here, and I'm not saying this facetiously, of the 7.1 who live here, many, many, many of them do not believe they have even one. They don't even have one other human being. My friends at the, at the old men's home, they really believe they'll die alone and they'll just be carted off and that's the end of it. All over the world, people don't even have one. How, how desperate, how frightening that must be. So if... if, if if even one human companion can lift us to a higher level. What about having the God of lights, this God of mercy and compassion as the one? You know the term we often use for the Holy Spirit, paraclete? Remember that word paraclete? For that word? When I was a little kid, I, you know, I didn't understand. I thought it was parakeet. And in our church, we had this big triangle, and God the Father, this old bearded man, was on his throne, and his good-looking son was standing next to him wearing a crown, and there was a bird. And I always thought the Father and the Son had their parakeet, yeah. But I, I've learned a few, a few things since then. Come to find out that paraclete is actually a legal term. It's not a religious term. And originally... Paracletus means one who comes and stands alongside. So the Holy Spirit comes to stand alongside. Legally, it's a, it's a defense lawyer. It's a counselor. It's someone who's at your side to protect you, to defend you, to guide you, to help you. And God the Father has given us Paracletus to be with us at all times, so that you never, ever, ever, ever have to walk alone. That's what God is doing. That's, that's, how, that's why we have value. You see, friends, we're not valuable for the things that we do. We do things because we are valued by God. As long as we keep trying to jump through the world's hoops we're always going to be frustrated, and we're always going to fail. It will never, ever be good enough. But if we could just rest in the arms of a loving God, if that could be our orientation, if that could be our point of reference, if that could be the mark that we set our lives by, 
friends, then everything changes. It's, it's nice if people like you, but if nobody likes you, God thinks you're great. I, I, I hope you have nice, comfortable living conditions. I really do. But, but if you don't, your Father has a beautiful place waiting for you. And before you know it, we're all going to be there. You, you've probably done stupid things in your life. I know I have. And your Father has forgiven you and doesn't hold that against you. If you only had one, <laughs> and God was the one, you got everybody you need. You can face any difficulty. You can overcome every trial. You can stand against every foe. You can face every challenge because the one is at your side. And friends, if we could open up our heart to that truth, I kid you not, we would be unstoppable. You can't break people who stand at the side of God. They, they can't be broken. We could be those people. Even if everybody else abandons you, I won't abandon you. I've written your name on the palm of my hand. There's something about knowing that you are loved that transforms, transforms you. When I was in high school, we had to read this book, Man of La Mancha. And I never was a big reader uh, in high school of all these books. Um, but after I got out of high school, I saw the play. You ever see the musical, Man of La Mancha? And uh, it, it was great. And this particular production I saw, uh, I'll give you the short version here. Um, Don Quixote is this kind of eccentric nobleman of Spain. And he, he, he kind of sees things differently. He'll see a windmill and he thinks it's a, a dragon. He'll be fighting the windmill and there's some guy on the side of the road and he thinks he's a thief and he holds him at bay, you know, wait till the, you know, wait till the authorities get here. And the guy says, what are you talking about? And Don Quixote has this assistant, Sancho Panza. And Sancho Panza just kind of gently goes along and keeps trying to get his master out of trouble. Uh, it's, it's kind of a you know, funny story in, in a lot of ways. Well, one day, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza stop at a tavern on their, their quests, on their journeys, and in the tavern, there's a, a woman named uh, Aldanza. And, and she's pretty rough. She's the barmaid, and um, she spends a lot of time with men at night, and kind of a rough character. And Don Quixote falls in love with her. He, he's convinced that she's a princess. And she laughs at him, you crazy old man, I'm no princess. And he, he just won't hear of it. And in the musical, you know, he's singing her songs, and she's throwing rocks at him. Get out of here, you're crazy, you're crazy. But, but he loves this woman. And it gets to a point where, where she's had enough, and I won't even use the words here, but these, these horrible poison, self-hatred comes out of her mouth. And she says, do you want to know who I am? You ask the men I sleep with. And I'm a guy. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to hear how much she hates herself. It's hard to hear. And he's actually given her another name. He calls her his Dulcinea, his princess. The, the, this, the woman of nobility, this woman with royal blood in her veins. She goes, I'm no princess, I'm a blankety, blankety, blank. Oh, it's hard to hear. Finally, she can't take this love anymore, and she literally runs away. And so for the next couple scenes in the musical, he's looking everywhere, searching for his lost princess. And, I mean, it, it's sad. The, the, the guy's heart is broken. So finally, the curtain comes up. It's the last scene. The curtain comes up, and there's a stage, a room full of people. And it's Don Quixote's bedroom. He's an old man. He's broken and worn down. His heart is broken by the loss of his princess. He's been looking for her for years. And he's literally laying in bed dying. 
And the room is full of people, uh, you know, very respectful and very quiet as the guy's taking his last breath. And there's Sancho Panza kneeling by the side of the bed praying. All of a sudden, a light comes on in the corner and there is the most beautiful woman standing there. Her hair is done up. She's got this beautiful white dress on. She has pearls on. And there's this kind of collective, oh, I mean, she's gorgeous. And, and Sancho Panza gets up from the bed and runs over. Yes, my lady, may I help you? And, and you, can, you can see her kind of lift her head a little bit. And, and she says, I wish to see the Don Quixote. Yes, my lady, and may I say who's calling? And, and you can see the tears fill up in her eyes, and her chin starts shaking. And she goes, tell him that Dulcinea is here. Now, Sancho Panza remembers the barmaid of 20 years ago, <laughs> and he looks up. He, he can't believe it. And everybody in the room says, Dulcinea? Did she say Dulcinea? We thought, you know, that crazy old man had made this up. That's Dulcinea? And as she walks towards the bed, instinctively, just compelling, everybody bows to this nobility. She walks up to the side of the bed. She takes the old man's hand. And he's, he's nearly blind now. I mean, he's dying. And he takes her hand and he says, Dulcinea, is it really you? In my heart, I knew you would come back to me. She gets up on the bed. She gets her arm around the old man and lifts him up and holds him to herself. And she says, yes, Don Quixote, I finally remembered who I really am. And so I have come back to you. And she leans over and kisses the old man. And he dies in the arms of his princess. I believe that there's nobility in all of us. And the crazy old man keeps telling us how much he loves us, how beautiful we are, how precious we are to him. And we keep throwing rocks at him and telling him, yeah, but what about 1975? Yeah, but don't forget 1989. Yeah, remember I was at that party and I drank too much? Remember that one? And we're throwing rocks at the crazy old man who keeps telling us who we really are. But there is a day coming, I swear there is a day coming, when you will remember who you really are. And the old man's words will cut your heart like a knife. And the day you remember that and believe that, and embrace that. That's the day you will return to his side and you will say, I finally remember who I really am. God bless you. Thank you. teach everything he commanded them to teach. New ways to communicate God's word. Present positive images to our people. This message of truth and salvation. Culture of uh, encounter. Gospel of Christ worldwide. Shalom World TV. Twenty four seven, 
faith-filled, dynamic, virtue-building, commercial-free, family-friendly, Catholic charismatic channel to the whole world. Promote the gift of church teaching, dedicated for the new evangelization. Mentor the young into a deeper embrace of the Catholic faith. Wonderful contributions to the church. People of prayer. Attractive people, attractive messages. Peace of Christ. Promote the values of life. This is media at its very best. The voice of the church. With great love. Taking this to the next step. Shalom World TV. Shalom. 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 Shalom.